Hello, family. It is good to be with you. I think that people who record lessons say that accommodatively. I'm glad to be bringing you this lesson, but I will really be glad when we can be back together, hopefully in just a few short weeks. I miss every one of you, and so many good things are happening even when we're apart. Relationships are being strengthened at home, over the phone, different ways that we communicate. But hopefully in a little while, what a great reunion we're going to have. And I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you are as well. We are glad and certainly expecting that everyone is worshiping God at home, uh, just as we would collectively at the building. And I want you to know that uh, this week I'm coming to you, I'm recording this in living color from my bedroom. Uh, last week, I, I was asked many times, where was I recording? And we were over at uh, Bert Holt's house and Tanya's. And um, we're glad that uh, Bert and Tanya help us out in the recording and the uploading of, of these videos. But uh, tonight, I'm really solo because I can look to my left here. I'm recording this at night, as you can probably detect from uh, my window behind me. I look to my left, and I've already put Chris to sleep. Uh, but I hope that uh, uh, she'll watch this later. But I hope I don't do that with you all and that if you're using this as, uh, as an aid in your worshiping of God, uh, uh, that, is, that is a good thing. And I hope that you will engage in all acts of worship and worship God in spirit and truth, that you will collectively sing. And I know that many of us in our homes, we have uh, pianos and guitars and, and maybe even strobe lights. I hope that you'll leave those alone during our worship, and if you don't know why, well, we'll talk about that when we get back together. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ and would like to email me about that, that would be, that would be good as well. You can reach me at matt.amos at woodstockchurchofchrist.org, and we hope that you'll engage in prayer and uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper, unleavened bread and fruit of the vine, uh, and that you'll uh, contribute and we would ask as well if you could send those contributions into the church building and, and not uh, keep those, and uh, um, if at all possible, not to keep those until we are able to be back together, but we'll send those in uh, even weekly. Uh, we have uh, bills that we have to pay. We have um, salaries that we need to keep up with, and we would appreciate if you can uh, keeping up with those. As was uh, announced by our elders in their weekly memo to us, uh, Wednesday evening, we are going to be able to have a Bible study together. Uh, Bert will upload uh, a Bible study uh, from the book of Philippians. We're going to study uh, that great book of rejoicing and isolation. Paul was in a Roman prison when he penned that book. Uh, he was isolated, as many of us are. And we're told in that book to be content in whatever situation we find ourselves, to rejoice always. And so uh, I'm going to look forward to uh, delving into that book in an expository way. You'll be able to open your Bibles and follow along, and, and we'll have a good period of Bible study. We'll upload those on Wednesday night about 5 o'clock, so any time after that, um, that will be available to you. Uh, remember uh, to support our food providers uh, remember to uh, call Jeremy Powell by Wednesday and order your meat, your ribs and brisket and butts and wings, and you can pick those up on Friday. Uh, we were able to do that uh, this past week, and there was a, a good line waiting the waiting uh, the meat, and we hope that more will do that. And also to call Frank and Glenda Cole at the Frosty Frog. Uh, they're open every weeknight until 7.30, 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoons, and you can call your order in or you can order online, and uh, they will bring it right out to the car to you. And that is a good way to help our own as we uh, navigate through this uh, time of isolation. We all like it when life is going our way. 
when the family is healthy and happy, the business is going well, uh, the checkbook looks good and relationships are good. During those times, we feel like we're in control. And that's good for a time, but it's not good for a long time. If we are comfortable all the time, we wouldn't be who God wants us to be. Our comfort many times is at others' expense. For example, when uh, the husband and the wife come home from the work day and there are clothes to wash and there are, are dishes to tend to, well, the husband may be tempted to kind of recline in the recliner. Well, the husband's comfort many times then comes at the wife's expense. Uh, my large bank account might mean that someone is going hungry. Uh, my excessive entertainment might mean that someone is not being taught the gospel. Sometimes our comfort comes at someone else's expense. And you know, the Bible teaches us that we don't grow when everything is going our way. We grow when we eat our peas. And that is coming from someone who does not like peas. Have you ever heard the phrase growing pains? There is so much to that. We grow when we have to stretch. We grow when we have to exercise, either physically or spiritually. We grow when we're not comfortable. And you know, when we are a little bit nervous and we're not sure how a certain event is going to work out, do you know that those who study such things tell us that we perform better under those conditions? And that's when we grow the most. In Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. You know, Jesus had to grow. He had to stretch in order to become what the Father wanted him to be, namely, our complete Savior. He had to experience pain. He had to experience growth. In that, in that way. He'd never experienced obedience before, never had to do it. The Hebrew writer tells us that he did that by the things that he suffered. And when he was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness, the Bible says that he fasted for 40 days. Why do you suppose that he fasted 40 days before being tempted of Satan? Well, he wanted to show us that at his weakest point, at the point of extreme discomfort, he could still overcome sin and Satan. And you know, at times in God's providence, things in our lives are shaken up. Sometimes God is doing that. Perhaps sometimes God is allowing it. We can't pinpoint every time to what degree God is in that. But you know what? He is going to be with us. No matter if we know exactly to what degree his hand is in it, he is going to lead us through those times. He leads us out of the familiar to the unfamiliar. And wasn't that the case with all of God's faithful throughout Scripture? Sometimes he leads us into situations where we are proverbially, uh, it, it's over our head. Perhaps a friend is removed, a loved one is removed from our lives. Perhaps we don't have the funds and now it's a little bit uncertain and we get nervous and we pray like we've never prayed before. Perhaps a pandemic enters our lives and it brings us much uncertainty. God uses the uncertainty and the lack of understanding to bring us to faith, to bring us to maturity, to grow us to spiritual heights. I hope none of us get the idea that life is supposed to be smooth all the time. And when it's not, something is wrong or God has left us, 
that God has forsaken us. No, God never leaves us or forsaken us. God is in the storm. God is in the scary moments. God is in the times of uncertainty in our lives. When things happen that we don't like, we tend to blame the enemy. But sometimes it's God. He didn't create us to remain spiritual infants. He didn't create us to keep us in one spot and keep us comfortable all of our lives. We were made to take the ground. We were made to be soldiers. We were made to advance. And to do that, we have to get out of what we many times call our comfort zone. I would assume that most of us right now during this pandemic in many ways are out of our comfort zones. We have to face something that's unfamiliar, that's not natural, or it's scary. When you see your Goliath, and he's twice your size, he's twice what you ever imagined him to be, there is a feeling of uncertainty that comes over us. When you see the Red Sea and you know the enemy is approaching and you know that those tall waters could fall in on you at any moment, you weren't given the precise time how or when those things were going to happen. You just know that you were in an uncertain time and that you had to hurry and you had to get through it. God didn't leave you. God doesn't leave you during those times. When you pick up your cross daily, sometimes there's uncertainty there. God hasn't left. God wouldn't have allowed trouble to come into your life if he didn't equip you to overcome it. And that's the message of today, and that's the message of Scripture. Do it afraid. You've been armed with God's strength for every battle. No, he won't leave you or forsake you. Take on the whole armor of God. He's equipping us to face every battle. You may feel fear, and that's normal. Do it afraid. In spite of the feelings, God is setting you up to go to a new level. We like to be com uh, comfortable. We like to have it all figured out. We feel like we're in control. The truth is we are at our best when we are relying on God. May be a little nervous, may be a little unsecure how it's going to work. But a little healthy fear where we have to rely on God is not bad at all. If you can do everything, if you could do everything in your own power, you wouldn't have to rely on God. You wouldn't experience the growth that he wants us to experience. If you can do everything like that, then it's not going to turn out as God would have it turn out. At some point, you are going to need to put a demand on your faith. You're going to have to stretch. You're going to have to have your spirituality exercised. We're not put here to coast through life. And sometimes we don't have a choice and we're pushed into uncertainty. I'd like to give you a parable to consider. And we've perhaps heard this parable before, but maybe not just like this. A mother eagle makes a very comfortable nest for her eaglets. She cushions that nest with grass and with straw and with soft branches. And the first part of the eaglet's life, the mother totally caters to that eaglet. I mean, he's so happy and cared for. He just reclines in his nest and opens its mouth and mama just drops the food right in. And they don't have to worry about protection, protection from other animals. 
because mama has protected them and put them on a high cliff and she's constantly watching over them. But then a few months pass. And at that time, the mama eagle begins to take away the grass and some of the comforts from the nest. And she takes out the leaves and the sticks then begin to poke the little eaglet. They don't like it. And so they get out of that nest and they begin to hop on the rocks and and actually when they're doing that they're developing their muscles and they're getting ready for the time when the mother thinks they're strong enough to push them not only out of the nest but she pushes them over the cliff and then the eaglet begins to fall to the ground and don't you know that if the eaglet could talk at this time, the eaglet would say, what has gotten into mother? Doesn't she love me anymore? How could she be doing this? Doesn't she know how uncomfortable this is? Doesn't she know that I'd rather be back in the nest playing video games? Well, as the eaglet falls to the ground, the mother eagle then swoops down and catches the eaglet before the eaglet hits the ground. And then the eaglet thinks, wow, I'm glad mother finally came to her senses. And perhaps uh, the eaglet says to her mother, okay, mom, take me back to the nest where I belong no one will know about this. I will not say a word about it. I won't call EPS. That's Eaglet Protective Services. You know, you know, mom, don't you, that it's against the law to kill an eagle. So the mother takes the eaglet back, puts him back in the nest, and it's not long until mama pushes him out again. And this time, though, when the eaglet is pushed over the cliff, not knowing what his wings do, but he just naturally begins to get his balance and, and to flap his wings. And in time, after doing this maybe a few more times, the eaglet begins to fly behind his mother and eventually soar with eagle's wings. The nest for that eaglet was a blessing for a time, but later that nest became a hindrance. The eaglet couldn't develop its wings while it was still in the nest. If the mother didn't push the eaglet out, it wouldn't survive. And sometimes the nest we are in, proverbially speaking, is too small. As much as we like it, as comfortable as it is, it is limiting our growth. The protection, the provision is nice. But the problem is this. You won't develop your wings in the nest. You won't exercise your spirituality like you must in the nest. You won't reach your potential without experiencing those new things. Like the eaglet, maybe you're thinking, what is going on in life? God, have you left me? Don't you know I'm at the end of my rope? I can't go on like this. This is so uncomfortable. I'm falling and God hasn't caught me yet. You know, it's interesting what Moses said before he was to die and as he brought the people to, uh, uh, to the promised land and he was giving the reins over to Joshua. And, and he said this, as an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord leads his people. This parable 
is very real. Eaglets don't discover their wings in the nest. They can only begin to fly when they're falling, when they're afraid, when they're in the scary places. That's when you will discover your wings. That's when you will, when you, you will understand how God cares for you. And during those times, we shouldn't ask, God, where are you? Where is God? He's not going to let you hit the ground. You may have things coming against you right now. We all have this virus coming against us. The question that I have probably been asked the most in the last week is this. Is this a message from God? I don't know the detail of those answers, but that's not the question that we need to ask. Whether it is, whether it isn't, and to what degree it is or isn't, isn't the question. But this is the question. Will God use this situation to grow us, to bring us closer to him? And I know without a doubt the answer to that question is yes. God wants us pushed out of the nest he wants us out of our comfort zones. And, and, and that has happened, hasn't it? Many of us are not going to the stores as often. Many of us have been pushed out of our friends' homes and even out of our families' homes. We've been pushed out of our church building in corporate worship. Yes, we have been pushed out of our comfort zones. But how do we handle the stirring of this nest? God, I know you're planning for my good. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord and to those who are the called out according to his purpose. God's dreams are bigger than our dreams. God sees the whole picture. When we are being pushed out of the nest like that little eaglet, we don't understand how we are to function many times. We don't see the whole landscape. The only thing that we know at the beginning is that we're not comfortable. But if we realize that God is the protector, that he's not going to let us fall, he's not going to let us hit the ground, then we can come with the idea that he is in control, that we are to rely upon him. When we come to the end of life, will we have more regrets over the spiritual risks that we did not take? What will be the thinking there? All of God's faithful, no matter who they are, no matter who they were, were all proven in the scary place. They were all proven during times of uncertainty. No matter who you think about, Abraham, you know, that was an uncertain time going up the mountains of Moriah to offer Isaac. Moses was scared to go to Egypt and to get God's people out of the land of bondage. Elijah, he was nervous when he confronted the prophets of Baal. On and on we could go. David, do you think that his heart wasn't beating when he was going to meet Goliath? No, they were all afraid. It's normal to be afraid. They were all scared. It's normal to be scared. And we are right now. We face an uncertain time. Perhaps we face spiritual uncertainty in our lives. We can overcome. God has equipped us to get through the uncertain times. When we do that, and when we are on eagle's wings, look at what all happens. A greater dependence on God. We become closer to him. He is launching us into our brightest hour. You know, when Jesus was placed on the cross and he was praying the night before uh, as great drops of blood, do you know Jesus at that time was being launched into his finest hour when glory and dominion and a kingdom were given to him and he is now reigning at the right hand of the throne of God. And when Paul was suffering all of, his, uh, all of his setbacks and he was praying to God to remove the thorn in the flesh, 
he was getting ready to be hoisted into his finest hour. And the way that the apostle left earthly scenes into, into glory, it was, it was an amazing thing how he was looking forward to that crown of life. When we are carried on eagle's wings, we learn more how God works. And this is how the Prince of Peace protects us. You know, for God to give us his peace, there had to be uncertainty before the peace comes. I will give you peace. If we are always comforted, if we are always at peace, then God can't give it to us. And this is going to fuel future victories. This victory leads to another. And when I learn how I won this victory, then I'm prepared to win again. Athletes know this. That's why film is studied. Look at what we did right in this game. Look, we won this game. We enjoyed a great victory. How can we apply the same principles in order to enjoy the next victory? Well, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same way that Christianity, that spirituality works. And when we enjoy these victories, the more we enjoy, the more we don't shrink back the next time. You know, it's always easy to be safe. It's, it's easier to try to be comfortable in our lives. You know what? When we stay in the nest over time, that can become the most dangerous. But I'm afraid. Yes, we're afraid. But as the title of this lesson suggests today, do it afraid. We know that we should walk away from the familiar to the unfamiliar. That's the lesson of the word of God. But no matter, this is your moment. During times of uncertainty, you are going to be able to glorify God the most. This is your moment. This is your Christianity. This is your spirituality. This is your destiny. What if you miss it? What if I miss it? What do we learn from this? As we are more dependent upon God, yes, you can teach that class. Yes, you can teach somebody how to be saved. Don't go to your grave letting fear hold you back from God. But you might say, have I missed opportunities? Yes, we have all missed opportunities. But you know what? God is going to shake your nest again. God is going to allow, if not cause, some uncertainty in your life. Don't let comfort keep you from your calling. And when we look in Hebrews chapter 11 and those faithful servants of God, they were all afraid. They were all uncertain, but they did it afraid. Like Isaiah of old, when God said, who will go for me? In times of great oppression, as Isaiah was prophesying, during times of embattlement, during times of captivity and potential captivity, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. Isaiah, were you uncertain? Were you afraid? You and I know what that answer is. But I want to encourage us all, like Isaiah, like all of the greats from the word of God, every one of them, do it afraid. Maybe there's someone here that needs to repent of sins. Maybe there's someone here that's uh, hearing this needs to become a Christian, but you're afraid. You're afraid that you can't live the life that God wants you to live. Yes, you can. He's equipped you to do it. He's given you the word of God. He's given you his bride, the church, for encouragement. And we all are going to do it afraid. Hello, everyone. The elders wanted to take the opportunity to start having a few comments at the end of uh, Matt's lesson and to also offer a prayer uh, at the end of uh, the sermon as well. Uh, trying to look for a little bit of normalcy to follow the, uh, the same kind of format we had uh, when we met together at the church building. So I know it's a difficult time for everyone and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with 
with all and uh, we we absolutely look forward to the day that we can uh, gather again once again at the, the church building but uh, we hope that uh, you all will be mindful of not this life but the life after and that, uh, what a glorious time it's going to be when we get to be together uh, for eternity uh, so thank you for that uh, thank you for your sacrifices thank you for uh, your worship. Uh, I know many of you uh, are worshiping at home and uh, we appreciate uh, those efforts. Uh, if any of the elders can be of uh, help at all in any of those uh, activities, please let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to help. Uh, I want to also remind you that uh, we now have the ability to um, uh, give our offering online. Uh, Give Lifey is the app. Uh, you've seen it on our Facebook page and uh, also on the website. So uh, take advantage of that. That uh, should uh, help us as well. Also want to remind you that uh, Ellen puts out a, a weekly prayer list every week by email. If you are not getting that, uh, please send uh, Ellen an email or call the office and uh, she'll get that out uh, for you. I uh, also want to remind you that beginning uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, Matt will start a uh, lesson series on uh, Philippians. Uh, it's uh, an attempt to have a Bible study during the middle of the week, so uh, hope you will all uh, participate in that as well. So at this time, I'd like to uh, offer a prayer. Would you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the time that we have, the the many physical blessings that you give us, uh, the things that we've uh, taken for granted before that now we see and we know that uh, are blessings from you. Father, we're mindful of this tribulation, this difficult time that we're living in. Uh, we know there are those that are, are hurting, those that are suffering, uh, both from a financial point of view and from a physical point of view. We pray that you bless them and give them the things that they would need that uh, they can regain their health. And uh, we pray for those that uh, are going through financial difficulties that uh, you would comfort them and, and help them to be uh, able to sustain uh, their livelihoods. Father, we're mindful of our country, uh, this difficult time we're living in. We pray that uh, you'd be with our country, be with our leaders, uh, give them wisdom that they might be able to uh, do the things that uh, they should do to minimize the impact that uh, uh, this has had on all of us. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, this time would be shortened as much as possible. Uh, Father, we know all things are possible uh, through you, and we just pray your guidance and uh, your help in this difficult time. Father, be with us, be with our congregation. Uh, help us to reach out to one another. Uh, help us to uh, be mindful of one another and, and do what we can to help. Uh, Father, heal the sick. Uh, heal those that are uh, suffering emotionally. Uh, we pray that uh, you'd be with us and, and uh, we pray for a time that we can be gathered together again. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time, and uh, we uh, again look forward to a time where we can uh, be together again physically.